just my Australian accent sucks, so I'm not going <laughs> to bear with me with that. <clears throat> You'll get the idea. The Curious Story of Frank by Boris Glickman. So, anyway, like I was saying, I was sitting comfortably in this nice chair when Mr. Stims told me that he wanted, he wanted to do something with, the, with his invention. But please, don't inter interrupt me again because I'm going to forget what I was saying and won't be able to tell you the whole story of what happened that day. Let me begin from the start. As I can't remember now what I have already told you, my name is Frank. I finished school two years ago. I stay at home most of the time and watch TV. I live with my mom. I, lurk, I like her a lot. Uh, she's very smart and she knows about everything. So I don't see what's wrong with saying, that's what my mom told me. But the other kids used to laugh when I said that and called me a retard, which made me angry. Now, I can't hang out with them anymore. My mom tells me I have a bad temper and I could hurt them. He himself sat behind the desk on which lay writing pads and folders all neatly organized. Did I do that right? Oh, sorry. My only friend, oh, let me go back. My only friend is my next door neighbor, Mr. Stims. I really enjoy being with him. I love the brain games that he is so good at in inventing, and I usually spend time in his living room where we drink tea, eat some biscuits, and discuss interesting topics. But that day, Mr. Stims invited me into his study and asked me to sit in a comfortable chair beside his desk. He himself sat behind the desk on which lay writing pads and folders, all, all neatly organized. After staring at me in silence with an odd look in his eyes for about a minute, Mr. Stims started talking. For the past five years, I've been engrossed in a, a fiendishly difficult task. As you probably have noticed, Frank, I no longer need to be secretive about what I do, but I did want to apologize for being evasive and unpredictable in the past. Mr. Stims continued, you might remember from your school days, my friend, what a polar molecule is. Well, water just happens to be compromised of polar molecules. In fact, is the linchpin of my work. The fact is that it is compromised of polar molecules. Does that suggest anything to you, Frank? He asked. Not waiting for my reply, as he usually does, he continued, I will get straight to the point. For your benefit, I will state in simplified terms, the water molecule is, charged, is a charged particle. Charged particles respond to magnetic fields. By creating a magnetic force of appropriate strength and aligning it in the right direction, we can separate the water molecule into its constituent parts. We can transform liquid water into gases of hydrogen and oxygen. The theory behind it, of course, is much more complicated than that. But what I have stated is my work in a nutshell. He stopped talking for a short while to give me time to understand what he just said said. But what we are waiting for, he then exclaimed, actions speak louder than words. Just one minute, and I'll show you how it works. While he was gone, I stretched my legs. He had been talking so long that they almost had gone to sleep. I also had an itch on my back where a mosquito bit me, and it gave me a good scratch. I could not do that while Mr. Sims was in the room. When I'm with him, I tried to behave properly so he will respect me. I remember dinner time was coming soon and wondered what my mom had cooked for me. I hoped it would be fish fingers with mashed potatoes. That's my most favorite meal in the world. My friend wasn't gone for long. When he came back, he was carrying a small, shiny box and a full glass of water. I thought it was really thoughtful of him to bring water to me because I, I was really thirsty. And I was about to reach out my hand and say, thank you, Mr. Stims, it's really, really thoughtful of you, when he put that shiny box over the top of the glass. There was a hissing sound, and the water disappeared before my eyes. Well, it, it didn't actually 
disappear straight away. For a second, it looked like the water was cut in half like a fresh bread roll with a sharp knife. And then both halves vanished. I, I was miffed as I really did want to drink the water. But still, the sight was so amazing that I couldn't help but crying out, wow. The room filled with a funny smell like a cross between rotten eggs and fresh pineapple. Mr. Stims must have noticed me sniffing, and he said, that is nitrous oxide, or laughing gas. It's commonly known. The oxygen released by the process has combined with the nitrogen in the air. It, you have to be very careful with nitrous oxide. It messes with your mind. I knew he expected me to say how impressed I was, so I said, gee, I'm really impressed, Mr. Stims. He didn't reply for a while, and then he started a long speech. I have great plans, Mr. Sims says. Imagine magnifying the strength of this machine a hundredfold, a thousandfold, a millionfold. Look at the map of the world, Frank. Look how much space is taken up by the oceans. Two thirds of our planet is water. Two thirds. So many regions are overpopulated. This leads to stress. Stress leads to crime. What use is ocean water? We certainly can't drink it. In any case, many regions that are now oceans used to be land once. We need to reclaim the land, and we need to stop that here. The time has come for the oceans to go. We will make them disappear, just like water in a glass. Certainly, this might cause some climate change, but that could be easily fixed. And just imagine land, land, land everywhere. One great continuous continent, no barriers between countries. The whole world finally united as one, living in one room in peace, room to plant crops, room, to cattle, uh, room for cattle to roam, spaciousness. At that present, mankind doesn't even dare to dream of. Whole continents underneath the oceans are just waiting for us to populate them. Yes, there'll be a price to pay. The price will be paid by the ocean's inhabitants. But we need not concern ourselves with that. Intelligence arose on land and is the land dwellers that will rule the planet. And I will go down in history as the man who made it possible, the new savior of humanity. Well, this was very interesting, but I was getting rather hungry and kept thinking more about the fish fingers with the mashed potatoes. <laughs> It was then that a, a, a terrifying thought startled me so much that I felt like someone punched me in the stomach. I realized that without oceans, there would be no more fish. And without fish, there would be no more fish fingers for me to eat. Fish fingers really are my most favorite food in the world. I said, hey, wait a, wait a minute, Mr. Stims. I, I really like fish fingers. You can't kill all the fish. Give me that thing. I don't want you to destroy the oceans. Fish, mish, he replied. Who needs them? They don't sing. You can't pet them. And they smell terrible. He refused to give me the box. A scuffle broke out between us because I was getting a bit angry about not being able to eat fish fingers anymore, all because of the stupid invention. I reached for the gadget and tried to take it away from him. It was then that I accidentally pressed the round red button on its top. What happened next was the strangest thing of all. You know when a, you blow up a balloon and then let it go, tying it up, and it flies all around the room, letting out the air? Well, something familiar happened to Mr. Stims. All this vapor started coming out of his eyes, nostrils, and mouth, and he was getting thinner and thinner and changing his shape right before my eyes. And he just fell to the floor, or what was left of him, for by now he looked like a gigantic squashed raisin. I'm very sorry about this, Mr. Stevens, I said to him. But I, I, I really do like fish fingers. Uh, they are my most favorite fruit in the world. Then I took the box that was lying on the floor and broke it into small pieces. You both know what happened after that. 
The two detectives exchanged glances, and one of them said, Looks like it's going to be a long night for all of us, Frank. Thank <laughs> you.